I want to start by saying how honoured I am to be opening my fourth national summit as chair of UK Active. After four years with the team, representing a dynamic, innovative and driven sector, my conviction in our mission to get more people more active more often has never been stronger. When we gathered last year, we showcased the full breadth of our potential by visualising physical activity as the golden thread that runs through our society, underlining the impact of physical activity not just on public health, but on a myriad of social issues, from criminal justice to disability and from cradle to grave. We've already evidenced a snapshot of our value, some £3.3 billion, to addressing major societal issues beyond health, such as educational attainment, well-being and reducing crime. The Golden Thread is a vision grounded in evidence that shows the value of this agenda and this sector to society. But as we gather here today, I must admit I feel the challenge of turning this vision into reality. It remains a struggle. The pace of change we seek from government for our sector remains glacial. We must recognise that in the UK, the comprehensive partnership we seek with government remains down the track. And this sobering reality makes this day and this summit all the more important. I want this summit to be the call to action for our sector to mobilise, united in its demands, to leave the government and all the other main political parties with no doubt that we can have a profound impact on the health and prosperity of this nation. But I'm also realistic that part of this challenge and making our voice heard is that we're all trying to navigate a political landscape that many of us have just never experienced before. Brexit has changed the rules of political discourse in this country. It's consumed almost all of the focus and energy of the vast majority of politicians and civil servants in Westminster from the Prime Minister down. And in some ways, Westminster is showing all the characteristics of being in a marathon race, something I know a little bit about. Marathon runners need a single focus to get through the pain and conflict of their training and their races. A marathon can involve despair, both for the runner and those watching, but also peaks of joy and relief, although that's probably a little bit harder to say about Brexit at this point. Um, what most people don't realise is that when you finish the marathon and you reach your goal, the time, time comes when you must reconnect with all those responsibilities and relationships that had to be put on hold. And during my career, I finished a competition, returned to everyday life, and asked myself, what have I missed? Governments will stumble over the line, perhaps exhausted by the marathon it's run, and begin to reconnect with its other considerable responsibilities. And when, as we all hope, the fog of Brexit lifts after the 29th of March, our political leaders will need to clear their minds, take a deep breath, and begin to revisit the files currently grouped under other issues. I urge them to look at the file that says health of the nation as a matter of priority. And what does that file show? What is our reality? Today, 12.3 million people are at increased risk of type 2 diabetes. That is more than ever before. Just one in 10 preschool children meet the recommended levels for physical activity. Three quarters of UK children spend less time outside than prison inmates. And four fifths of obese children will remain obese as adults, losing between 10 to 20 years of healthy life. The poorest children in society are worst affected, losing 80% of their fitness levels over the summer holidays. And if we took the least fit child from a class of 30 in 1998, they would be one of the five fittest children today in a class of the same age. And with this desperate start to life, things don't look much better for the rest of us. Workers average nine days off a year due to sick leave, which costs UK businesses £32 billion a year. 13% of working age adults are living with pre-frailty, making them 20 times more likely to be unemployed for health-related reasons. 38% of people aged over 55 are classed as inactive, increasing to 48% for those aged 75 to 84. Is it any wonder that physical inactivity causes up to 37,000 premature, premature deaths a year in England alone and costs us £20 billion? It remains a national disgrace. So what does this all add up to? 
Well, it means the cost will continue to mount and the incredible pressure on the NHS will grow. This year's National Summit falls within the 70th year of the NHS. It's an institution that has saved my life numerous times. Our health service is admired around the world. It's something we cherish that gives us a deep sense of pride. And it's also something we're fiercely protective of. But we are all aware that the NHS is looking to serve societal challenges it wasn't built to address. There is a growing sense that it now operates, as some commentators have described, in an eternal winter. Its challenges are clear. 11 million people in the UK are aged over 65. By 2040, that will be 25% of the population. Life expectancy has risen, but that doesn't mean healthier lives, with the number of patients suffering from chronic illness ever increasing. Furthermore, dementia cases are due to exceed one million in the next three to five years. Crucially, how we live, eat and work is fueling preventative diseases. We already know the NHS is to receive an additional £20 billion in funding, helping to ease some of the pressure in the short term. But the answer can't just be another settlement for the NHS, irrespective of how welcome that is right now. If the health system doesn't shift its focus from cure to prevention, then when will the next call for funding come? Five years' time? Two years' time? Next year? The NHS is like a house being flooded. But rather than rushing to the mains and turning off the water pressure, this funding only offers more buckets. The water will continue to rise. We cannot fix the system this way. Because in truth... The answers to the future of the NHS don't lie within the NHS. The answer lies in fixing how we live. And that's why I'm growing impatient for change. I'm impatient because the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges has already stated that physical activity is a miracle cure. I'm impatient because Simon Stevens, chief executive of the NHS, stood on this very stage two years ago and said the magic pill of activity and exercise could cut 3% of strokes prevent 30% of cases of dementia, 30% of osteoporosis, could radically reduce the number of breast cancers and bowel cancers, not to mention prevent depression, reduce stress, eliminate type 2 diabetes, and cut by a third the falls that our parents' generation experience each year. I'm impatient because I see a nation as politically divided as the United States still able to look beyond its differences and come together this summer to pass new legislation in the House of Representatives which could help both families and workers reduce the cost of fitness and sports activity through a tax deduction. You know, I, I understand politics is about priorities, but how many bigger priorities can there be than the health of our nation? This has to be the challenge and the priority for our political leadership. Last year, I spoke about the opportunity for our biggest wings among the most vulnerable populations, children, young people, and the elderly. We recognise the legitimate argument for personal accountability in today's society. Um, it's not for us to lecture or condescend, to pigeonhole or to stereotype. What we must do is make physical activity natural again, to make it easy and fun to address the barriers of cost, accessibility and inclusivity to support people who will receive the most benefit from maintaining happy and independent lives. These two groups, the youngest and the oldest in society, are where government should work with us on achieving radical change. Today we present to government, policy formers and our sector two new reports that we believe will set the blueprint for these two groups. Firstly, we reveal the findings of the largest consultation on children's physical activity in recent times. Our report, Generation Inactive 2, Nothing About Us Without Us, lays out the priorities for our sector and partners to improve children's health and happiness, increasing physical literacy so they can flourish and reach their true potential. And as the title indicates, we went to our key stakeholders first for this one, the children and the young people. And they told us what really works for them. We know that our children face more pressures than ever before through social media, exams, heightened social awareness in a world with fewer sensors. And we want to re-inspire their natural instinct for play and physical activity. Fundamentally, we want physical activity and play to be made a public health priority for all children and young people. There is no silver bullet. 
no single intervention can turn the tide of inactivity, tackle childhood obesity and close the health gap. It will take a collective effort and a monumental one at that. This will require commitment from the very top of government and across every single part of society. Diet, physical health, mental health, we cannot tackle these in isolation anymore. The truth is there are a multitude of causes behind the crisis in child health and well-being that we see today, and we must address them in their totality, from social to behavioural to cultural. Our recommendations cover the needs of the individual, the family, community, and include robust calls for change to the institutions that oversee how we raise our children. There's nothing in this report endorsed by a coalition of stakeholders, including the Children's Commissioner and Longfield, that cannot be actioned by government and its agencies. So, let's see the NHS and public health agencies from the four home nations provide practical support and guidance for parents to improve engagement in their children's health and physical activity levels. So let's see NHS digital ring fence funds focusing on preventative digital technologies, engaging children and young people in healthy behaviours and leveraging the power of the world's largest technology companies in sport. So let's see local areas across the country develop schools into community hubs with integrated health, education and social care provision for children and family engagement. So let's see government fund out-of-school activities and holiday engagement programmes in disadvantaged areas. They could use the annual underspend on tax-free childcare as £350 million a year to invest in supporting parents in another way. So let's see real action on this agenda. All we ask is for the will and courage of government to do the right thing by the next generation. They will have our total support if they do. Together, we have the power to transform generation inactive to generation active. And there's another phase of life which also needs to be totally reimagined. Because as well as children and young people, we need to urgently address the later years of life. The price here is no less than £7.6 billion in savings to the NHS and the wider healthcare system over 10 years, as our report shows. Our population is ageing fast, with a growing proliferation of health problems, including disability, dementia and frailty. And it's long been assumed that such problems were directly due to ageing and that they could therefore be neither prevented nor treated. But the evidence now shows that ageing by itself is not a cause of major problems until our mid-90s. The message is clear. Older age does not have to mean ill health. This means we've got a major opportunity to add healthy, independent and active years to later life. Increased fitness can help develop people's resilience at any age so they're better prepared to cope with an untoward event such as a fall, a chest infection or a change in season or environment and reducing the need for unnecessary hospital admissions and shortening stays. To grasp this opportunity, we need to get older people more active more often. And why? Because that's how we'll improve the national experience of growing older and secure a sustainable future for our national health service. I believe our sector can play a greater role in this agenda. People over 55 currently account for 36% of the adult population. But amongst public leisure facilities, who are arguably best placed to meet their needs, only 20% of members fall within that age group. And I ask myself, why? Why is this the case? Because despite our ambition to engage older people, the sector is failing to provide a compelling offer for the grey pound. And we're missing out as a result. It's staggering, considering that over 40% of the nation's wealth is held by people over 65. We must address this productivity gap and consider what we must do with our products, programs, services, or professionals to close this gap. And this must include shifting perceptions of older, ad older adults. So the second major report we launched today, Reimagining Aging, supported by Circo Leisure, sets out distinct areas which represent a roadmap to active aging. Let's not leave it too late in life. We want to start in the workplace building physical activity into the working day and addressing the financial pressures and time pressures which prevent daily movement. So we're not waiting to pick up the tab frail to frailty down in retirement. We want a collaborative community model in which medical professions signpost patients towards a destination for physical activity. 
routinely embedding physical activity into every relevant care pathway. We want an infrastructure that centres on building accessible community facilities, which bring local services and physical activity provision under one roof, to give older people a one-stop shop for living better. A world-class wellness hub needs a world-class workforce, so we want to see greater investment and opportunities for careers in our new preventative health army. And why shouldn't an older person be a part of that workforce, as well as the beneficiary? We want to see more opportunities to get older people working in our facilities, encouraging greater participation among their peer group. You know, an army of older fitness instructors. Finally, we want more innovation to foster new products, programs and services with solutions to help people age well. And on that note, it's important to recognise the fundamental role that technology will have in helping us to address physical inactivity at each of these life stages. Uh, for a while, I've spoken of the dangers and damage that screens have brought to our health. I mean, there's, of course, is another side to the coin. The leaders in our market are harnessing technology for good, and they're using it to engage, inspire, and transform our experiences. And I know this resonates strongly with many in the room, not least the Secretary of State, Matt Hancock, who last week spoke of a digital revolution to transform the NHS, and I'm sure we're going to hear more about his plans later today. But the opportunities extend far beyond NHS IT systems and GP processes. You know, they're, they're just yesterday's problems. To solve tomorrow's problems, we need to harness the power of tech to spearhead the preventative agenda. We must use technology to build a bridge between the activity sector and its preventative forces um, with its partners in health. Initiatives such as Open Active are starting to make real progress, but this is an area where we must continue to press ahead. We've seen firsthand the potential that startups in the fit tech space are showing with the Active Lab Accelerator program, showing a thrilling sample of the smartest minds addressing the biggest challenges. Our success will hinge on how we embrace innovation and technology rather than fearing it, how we build greater levels of digital expertise and also courage in our teams. Our world has changed. Um, we must not try to play by the old rules, because if we do, we will fail. And failing will be costly. The two reports we bring you today are a litmus test for how seriously government wishes to take the prevention agenda. Developed through consultation with experts in their field, they challenge the status quo. They will require politicians to act with courage. Now, I'm not a dreamer. I know things take time, but I also feel I've been running my own marathon these past few years, and there are moments I feel that I've just hit the wall. Whether it be work out from work and extending the cycle to work scheme to cover gym and home equipment, a project that would bring benefits to society and the exchequer, whether it be wellness hubs and injecting a £1 billion investment to transform local community assets across the country. Both remain stuck in the Whitehall system. When you, you can't understand how such clearly beneficial initiatives are still yet to become a reality, your energy levels drop and you lose a little bit of faith. But it takes just one thing, one visit to one of our members to reclaim my faith. Um, last month, I visited the Sainsbury's Active Kids Holiday Club in Norfolk, part of our new pilot programme supported by Premier Education. And when I saw the power that this sector has, when it joins with local community services, in this case schools, to change lives, I was, I was deeply moved by the children and the parents I met, the reaction they had to the games they played together and the friendships they forged. Now, never in a million years did I ever imagine I was going to be playing dodgeball with the Chief Secretary of the Treasury, Liz Truss. Yeah. Um, what I learned is the children, I mean, they're tough. They do not mess about. Um, I did get smacked in the face with dodgeball, and, um, but it was just incredible to be there because these children were doing what they do best. They were having fun, they were playing, they were laughing, they were looking sweaty, um, and they all talked about how incredible it was. Now, is it any surprise that this is essential for their health? No, it's not. When you experience the power of the sector at its very best, then you know there's value in that struggle. And that makes me more determined than ever. So in conclusion, getting the nation healthy is going to be an effort of marathon proportions to achieve. It is going to be tough. It is going to be challenging. But it is achievable. 
And so I say to you today, let's run this race together. To the politicians in the room, join this race. This is one of the greatest challenges of our generation. Failure to radically address inactivity levels across all ages impacts heavily on the economic and social prosperity of our nation. Elevate this from the fringes to the heart of our political debate. Recognise that what we're currently doing doesn't work and implement the radical changes that we and many others are calling for. To the physical activity sector represented in the room today, make sure that we are leading this race from the front. Our sector has grown to become a broad church of organisations covering private, public and third sectors. Its diversity is a strength but can also hold us back. We still fail to tell the full impact of what we do. We fail to share data, analysis and expertise that shows our sector in its brightest light. Empower us to tell your story to government, fully equipped with a true picture of your positive impact on local communities, the length and breadth of this nation. We need this because there's an important period approaching. The budget this autumn will set out the total public spending for the years beyond 2020. We need to influence this process, make the case for change, make the case for improving the health of this nation. And when the fog of Brexit lifts, we need to be ready to move, to scale up pace and to be heard. Now, I want to finish by recognising that last week, the World Health Organisation revealed a new league table for global physical inactivity in one of the largest studies of its kind. The UK was ranked 123rd out of 168 nations. It's a national disgrace. This must not go answered. It cannot. The way we are living is not working. The way we're reacting is too slow. We need to run this one together with more energy and passion than ever before. Only together can we fix the way we live. Thank you.